Okay, so I want to drop the first video in regards to this series, and it's going to be based on consciousness, collective consciousness. It's non-entity and it's entity root. Um, consciousness and collective consciousness both have emotional and psychological triggers. And consciousness and collective consciousness say, in my analogy of a computer, are the add-ons in that computer. These are things that you share a collective consciousness by relating with a group that identifies with the same thing. So you identify with, say, a deity of some kind, a god, a theology of some kind. There is a collective consciousness that identifies with the same deity, the same theology, and the same root. And that can have an, a non-entity or an entity existence rooted in objective or subjective reality. Um, collective consciousness is based on, say, an objective manifestation would be people say that love the earth. Well, they all share a collective consciousness as loving the earth. The collective consciousness itself has no root. It's a non-entity, and it is simply a driver for either emotional or psychological programming through consciousness itself. So consciousness itself is simply knowledge that is gained through perception based on these biases that are built in to the browser software and my analogy of the mind operating to one degree or another like a computer and so the mind the the mind itself is the operating system it relates to the objective world the physical reality both in objective and subjective terms or, or conditions. And uh, these conditions are something that hopefully by the time that we are done with this particular video series, you'll have a more comprehensive understanding. But what I want to say about collective consciousness is is that collective consciousness is not one thing. It's collective consciousness says and it is a identity that you share with other people. You identify or your understanding of the concept or your belief is based on a collective consciousness and a collective belief, say in God. So everyone who believes in God shares a collective consciousness of that particular belief. And then that gets broken down further. Then the people who believe in Christ, the Christian view of God, that breaks down the collective consciousness into another smaller collective consciousness. And then there are an estimated 41,000 denominations of Christianity. So then that is breaking down the collective consciousness of Christianity further down to whichever version of the theology you believe in. But this collective consciousness, say, in God, only has an objective reality through the, the people who drive the collective consciousness of God. Until, say, God himself appears on the scene to reveal himself or herself, then you only have a collective consciousness based on non-entity, entity root to identify with God. And so the further along you identify in a collective consciousness, uh, there's a process, say, of discrimination further down the line as you, say, believe in God and then in Christianity, and then narrow that to one particular denomination, the denomination that you identify with then discriminates against all the other denominations. You are driving now a bias into your view 
of religion, which only can have an existence in your mind and those people that you identify in that collective consciousness with. And so the point that I'm trying to make is that these particular views and these particular beliefs ultimately are psychological and emotionally based. They are boundaries in the world and they are conditions in the world that every time you view the world through this internal browser of yours, you're going to automatically have those conditions and those beliefs driving to some degree your perspective. And so ultimately collective consciousness or collective consciousness says don't really exist in any other medium than how they are transferred through entity, non-entity platforms and language. And so non-entity would be a completely subjective way of transferring that and objectively is through a physical manifestation of some kind. And the mind itself has its ability to lose its center or share its center with any belief or idea. Whether that idea or belief is proven is irrelevant. The mind itself can narrow its view or expand its view based on beliefs and the drivers for those belief systems, which are always instinctual, emotionally driven. I wanted to, at least by placing the introductory video, also um, place a video that led into the next topic of conversation. And so psychologic, psychology and psychological principles are used every day in the objective world to control people. And ultimately, when you get to the point of understanding psychology itself, you can no longer be fooled through psychology. This is ultimately the information that I want to reveal because it is information that has been known and existed with an ontological root as far back as human civilization. And it has the potential to open up your mind, blossom you, and ultimately give you control over the conditioning you choose. Doing nothing can keep you from reaching your goals. And so can nothing keep you from reaching your goals. It is a maxim that can be read both objectively and subjectively, but nothing can keep you from reaching your goals and in terms of literally doing nothing will keep you from reaching your goals because we live in an objective reality where doing it towards a goal is the purpose of living. So nothing can keep you from reaching your goals. It can be read both ways, but this is where language itself becomes a trap between a subjective and an objective reality and these are the type of things that we're going to comprehensively understand. So now go back into that saying, nothing can keep you from reaching your goals. That is literally true in the objective world. And consciousness itself is not necessarily anything that actually exists. It's, it doesn't exist. It's a non-entity uh, way to relate um, to the objective reality. So it's just a word. And like I was saying about words earlier, we use words that have very subjective meanings in an objective world. And once you understand psychology, you are at least in control of your own conditioning. And uh, whatever decisions you make in your own individual life are based on on a point where you have the free will to do it because you're not subject, say, to the external non-entity or entity root drivers that collective consciousness itself delineates or generates through bias 
driven mechanisms. It's one way to learn on your own terms. And I'm, I'm going to end this video here and say that the next two videos are going to be based on collective consciousness, both subjective collective consciousness and objective collective consciousness. Have a nice week, and the video should be uploaded sometime next week, probably around Monday as well.